Aotearoa, the long white cloud, New Zealand. According to the local newspaper, a very large skeleton was found about seven feet below the surface on the saltwater creek spit. Timaru in 1875, when removing some sand for building purposes, the skeleton was estimated to belong to a person of around eight meters tall. It had a huge skull that a normal human skull could almost entirely fit into its mouth. It belonged to a mysterious tribe of local giants by Māoris called Te Kahuia Tepua, which used to roam the vicinity of Timuru until around 18th century. The guardians of this land, the Māori, have a rich and powerful culture full of mystique and an oral history that tells of a colorful and ancient past. The official story is that New Zealand was uninhabited 800 years ago when a fleet of seven canoes arrived from the Central Pacific. But a strange thing happened when they got to New Zealand. Their culture changed significantly. They built planked houses with decorative facades, used single canoes instead of outriggers, fashioned terraced village sites with amphitheaters, and created complex art forms not seen anywhere else in the Pacific. So what made them change? Was it merely the difference in climate? Or was it that they were influenced by people who were already living here? There are legendary stories of little blonde fairy people living in hobbit-like burrows and red-haired giants thundering across the landscape. Do these have any factual basis or are they all just fairy stories? In this documentary, we're going to explore a much deeper history in New Zealand, a history that explains who these blonde and red-haired people were, where they came from and why they are rarely seen today. Again in New Zealand, according to the legends, there were a lot of giants in New Zealand before and after the arrival of the Māori. One was Matu, who lived by the lake Wakatipu. Tipua means giant. He was nine feet tall. Even bigger was Te Puti, or Ngā Pui, who had eyes as large as a plate. The giant Tangaina lived by the Waikato River. He killed the high chief Korongoi, but his son then killed the giant. Footprints of the giant are supposed to be found at East Cape. We had at least three distinct groups of the Patupayarahe. Some were very, very tall. They seemed to occupy the whole west coast and areas inland. I think their, their big skulls have been found over at Otrahonga in the uh, limestone country. Whenever these uh, skeletons are found, uh, they're turned over to iwi and destroyed. Martin went on to tell us about the Raglan Giants. So we're heading there now to see what we can find. When we arrived at Raglan Harbour, we noticed some flat-topped hills that, according to the local Māori, were fashioned by red-haired giants. These people also lived on the coast at the foot of their sacred mountain, Karioi. In a battle with the marauding Tainui, they were driven over the edge at Tototo Gorge and their bones littered the base of the cliffs. We were told giant skulls could still be found hidden in the crevices and caves along the Raglan shoreline. It is said their heads were the size of pumpkins and their jaws could fit around one's own with over an inch to spare.
Just north of Raglan is Port Waikato, where similar skeletons have been found. There are uh, two major caves in the Port Waikato area where the great big skeletons are supposed to have been found in the 1800s. And there have been a number of articles and that about them. But uh, I think a female skeleton out there was somewhere in the vicinity of seven foot or a little bit over, and there were some male skeletons found that were taller than that. People who actually went into the cave reported that there were skeletons way down in the cave, which were quite, of quite tall humans, and also they had remnants of red hair on their skulls. And my DNA took me, you know, it went to Germany, into Russia, America, among the Inca people. Now, among, in Peru, there's a cave there. There's painting in the caves that depict the Ngati Hotu people being chased out and getting into their boats. But to me, from my DNA, we came straight here after leaving Peru, after being driven out. In South America, there is plenty of evidence of native people with golden hair and green eyes. There is the story of Keharoi, a giant of the Ngāti Raukawa and Ngāti Whakatere tribes, who met his death about 150 years ago. His stronghold was Takanuipa, on the middle hill of the Three Sisters. The chronicle hills which are seen close to the present motor road through the King Country a short distance south of Paniu River. The story has it that he was twice the height of an ordinary man and welded a hardwood taiaha of unusual length and weight. He was killed at last when he slipped on some karaka leaves as he fought in a battle just outside his pa. His enormous head presently decorated the palisades of Totorewa, a pa of Ngati Maniopoto, an excavation for an oven to cook the huge body was made where they fell. And in one's youth is those parts, the giant grave, as it was called, in the fern, was pointed out by Māori. The spot is close to where the Tōanui Hall now stands at the crossroads. Two fathoms long and a foot over is the native word of mouth record of Keha Roa's height. But let us be generous and allow that he was at least eight feet tall. There was another giant of those parts long ago. His name was Matau. Like Kiharoi, he was a man of the Ngāti Raukawa tribe. His favourite weapon was the Taiaha. He lived on a hill above the Wairaka River, a few miles beyond Arako. Māori accounts over that he was 11 feet high. In Rotorua country, too, there are stories, no doubt based on fact, of huge warriors of the past. There was the chief Tuhorangi. For one, he lived three centuries ago. He was nine feet in height. But another place I know they did go to, definitely, was, was Mexico. Because in Mexico they found an ancient old tiki. So the tiki is not a Māori emblem. It belonged to the Ngāti Hōtu people. And Mexico is in my DNA. Another thing they brought with them was the, uh, the thing they put up on the tefl tefl of a man doing, you know, with his tongue hanging out and stark naked, yeah. Bess, and they Bess. Could, that's right, it was named Bess. Yeah. Bit, a little bit of a joke of man. It is an Egyptian emblem. It's not Māori at all. In other parts of New Zealand, there are old time giant tales and the ancestors of certain families are said to have been of uncommon size. Such families as Kaiho of Waikato, Wahanui of the King Country, Hopapa of Rotorua, 
Tariha of the Bay of Islands. Some of them, far away in the North Auckland, there was a great fellow named Te Puti, a hero of the Ngāpuhi folk. His eyes were as large as the largest power shell, about the size of a saucer. When he sneezed, the thundering sound thereof was heard from Punakitiri, as far away as Kaikohi, and that is several miles in distance. In the South Islands, there are somewhat similar legends of gigantic warriors with a mighty reach of weapon. At the moment, our history in New Zealand for the arrival of the first people goes back a mere 800 years at the very most. But in fact, you know, if we start getting the deeper story, then Waitaha say they came here something like uh, 77 generations ago, which is, um, yeah, that's, that's nearly 2,000 years. But when they came, they said there were people already here. The lodge owners Murray and Jan had seen giant adzes found by Paddy and kept in a collection of artifacts by his widow, Mrs. Bella McGeady. They were 300 to 400 millimetres and obviously too big for a normal sized human to use efficiently. Mr. Stan McGeady of Okiwi has the adzes in storage. There is another Okiwi resident who while pig hunting in Coppermine Bay as a young man had discovered a cave containing a full skeleton over 2.1 meters tall. People on the island still find collarbones, femur and so on. They are at least one and a half times the size of normal human bones. It seems clear that a race lived here long before Māori, who were killed off by the Māoris. Many, many elderly Great Barrier residents are convinced that giants once existed on their island. Alan Gray's father farmed a drained section at the headwaters of Kaitoki Swamp. Here he had seen a giant skeleton found on a nearby section of Crown Island, reclaimed from the swamp. He said the giants are no legend. They are an actual fact. He has no idea what happened to the bones after they were found. His father had the impression that they were removed from the island. You go back to the islands, you're not going to see the swirling the intertwining things you know where does this come from and it's like man i could translate that and make it look exactly like a celtic pattern you know so we had to be influenced by peoples or surroundings that were already here